Good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to another Pineapple Bites video training session. In this training session we will cover two things in regards to creating new employees for your Aloha system. The first example we will create an employee that is just going to be using the front of house software on the workstations and the second example is we will create an employee who is going to have access to the front of house software as well as the back of house Aloha manager software. The first thing you're going to want to do is log into Aloha manager just by double clicking on your Aloha manager icon on your desktop. You're going to want to put in your username and your password to log into Aloha manager. From here, you're going to want to select maintenance, labor, employees. From this screen here, it will take you to the very first employee that's programmed in your database. If you need to see a list of your employees, you can hit the drop down here and it will show you every employee that is programmed into your database. Please be aware that you will not see employees that have been terminated in the system. They will not show up in this list. The system automatically filters those out for you. So to create a new employee, the first thing we're gonna do is for this particular employee, they're gonna be using the front of house software only. So right here beside this new button, you're gonna to wanna to hit this arrow and select POS only. POS only means that they can only use the front of host software. If we select OK, it's automatically going to take us to the next available number. If this does need to be changed manually, you do have a few options. You can click on the three little dots here beside the number. You have a couple different options you can pick from. Next unassigned number, first unassigned number, first unassigned number following 126, or this number. You can type in a manual number here if you want to make it that number. It's also going to show you a list of numbers that are already being used in your database. So these are numbers you can't use. For this instance, we'll just leave it as 126. We'll just hit OK. The first mandatory field you're going to see is the social security number. So anywhere you, in Aloha Manager where you see a red X in a circle, that means something needs to be filled out in this field in order for you to save and go any further with the programming. The social security number is primarily for um, United States security numbers. Um, so you don't have to put the actual nine digit social insurance number here. Uh, you can go ahead and put anything in there, any nine digits you wish. We typically, as default, usually just use nine number ones. So just, just any nine digit number, just so the system takes that as, as a valid input. Then you're going to want to click into the last name, and you're going to want to put in the employee's last name that you're created. So we'll just create Smith, first name. Paul and nickname usually is the same as the first. The nickname is what's going to show up on the kitchen chits that are ordered to the kitchen as well as any of the customer's receipts um, that get printed off by this employee. So you're going to want to make sure you, you put a decent nickname in there. Uh, like I said, it's usually just the same as the first name. Next thing you're going to, all the information here too before we proceed uh, doesn't have to be filled out. Uh, it, you don't see any red X's here, meaning that this can all be bypassed. If you do wish to fill this out, it's basically just adding in more information for you to be able to access, but it's not mandatory. If we click on our status tab here, this gives you the option to be able to put in their employee stab, uh, status, what their job status is, start date, um, any break exemptions. Uh, typically, we leave all this at default, but similar to the employee tab if you want to go in and change any of this you can job codes this is the tab where we actually do have to put something in uh, we won't be able to save this until we actually assign this employee with at least one job code and one access level uh, what the job code is is basically what they're going to be doing when they use the front of house software so they're going to be a server they're going to be a bartender they're going to be a cashier 
um, and the access level is basically what permissions, security permissions are allowed to do with the front of house software. So typically bartenders will just have bartender access level, servers will have a server access level, um, managers will have the manager access level. Sometimes, though, you'll have servers that are working as a server, but they still have management access levels. Um, so you can assign a manager access level to a server job code. So what you're going to need to do is just over here on the right-hand side, you're going to click Add. From the job code here, you're going to see it does have a red X beside it. So we're going to have to pick our job code. Here's a list of all the ones that are programmed in the database. In this particular example, we'll just be creating a server. And then your access level here, we're going to want to hit a drop down and assign appropriate access level. Uh, like I said, if this was a server that also is able to do management type um, features from the front of host software, you'd want to select manager. If not, and they're just a basic server, you can just give them an access level of server as well. You can also put in their current rate of pay. And the rest of these fields, they don't have to be touched. So you can go ahead and hit save. If you have real-time updates enabled in your system, you can hit yes. And what that will do is it will automatically push this information out to the terminals, the workstations. So then Paul, number 126, could automatically start just logging in under 126 right away. So if we hit yes, it's going to go ahead and send that information out. If you don't have automatic updates enabled or real-time updates enabled, you're going to want to make sure you do a full system refresh, uh, which is done under utilities, POS, refresh POS, and all installed products. This will make the terminals restart, come back up into Aloha, and then that number will be uh, available to use. But if you are using automatic updates, you are able to push that out right away. So that's the first example of creating an employee that is just going to have access to the front software. If we're looking to create an employee that has got to as well have access to the back software, what we can do there, so we'll just close out of this window just so we can start from the, the first again. We're going to want to go to do maintenance, labor, employees. And now on the right hand side, we're going to click this arrow again, but we're going to select POS and above store. So above store means basically new Aloha manager. Will they be able to use Aloha manager on the back of us computer? So we're going to click that and hit OK. Again, it's just going to go to our next available number. You can change that if you need to. We're going to put in a social security number value. Last name, we're going to put something in here. So we can just make up a name here for this. Um, Johnson. And first name, Randy. Nickname as well. We'll just leave it as the same as the first name. Status, we can make changes here if we need to. We don't need to. We can go to job codes. We're going to give them at least one job code and one access level. So we're going to click add. We'll just make server and we'll manage our access level for this one. Uh, you can add more than uh, one job code and one access level as well. You just keep, keep hitting add. So if you had multiple in here, then when that person goes and logs in using their number, they will be prompted at the beginning of their shift to pick which job code they're looking to actually be for that day. So we'll put in our current rate of pay here. So before we can hit save now, like we did in the past example, we now have an extra tab up here that it says above store settings. So we have to go into this tab because we need to configure this user to be able to actually log into Aloha Manager on the back. So we have to give it a username. So the username, what I recommend is just using the same as their employee number. So in this example, it's 127. And then you're going to need to assign a security role. Security role, usually we have a couple of default ones. We use master access, view access, or all. Typically, we always just set them up as master access so they have the availability to be able to do anything from Aloha Manager that you would be able to do as well. Um, if you are looking to set somebody up to have maybe just view access so they can view everything but they can't change any data, you could assign the view access level to them. 
Um, access levels is something that you can also create additional ones of and and get very specific on what you want them to be able to do in Aloha Manager, but we won't cover that in this session. So for now, we'll just pick Master Access, and then we can go ahead and hit Save. Same as before, if you have real-time updates enabled, you can just hit Yes. So now we have 127 created that can actually use the front of host software as well as the back of host software. So now, if we log out of Aloha Manager, and we use 127, which was Randy's employee number we created. Just type that in for the username, leave the password blank because we haven't assigned, or that user hasn't assigned a password to their Aloha Manager yet. This password has nothing to do with the password that's on the front of host terminal, strictly for Aloha Manager only. So they go ahead and hit sign in. The first time it's gonna ask them to create a new password for themselves. So there's a couple, couple of, criterias that need to be followed there and the password does rotate I believe it's every 90 days so every 90 days the user will be prompted to create themselves another new password um, that's just for security reasons so there you have it that's a video on how you can create a user that's going to have access to the front of host software only as well as a user that will have access to the front of host software and the back of host software thank you for tuning in have a great day